is David Lindley. Uh, they're here today to talk to us about some upcoming projects for this year and tell us a bit more about Hazel Cast in Java. So Mika, would you like to kick off? Yes, fantastic. So uh, I was uh, a member of the Java team in the early days at Sun Microsystems, and I'm particularly excited about Java 8. Uh, I think it's a tremendous advance of Java. It's probably one of the biggest advances of Java since the, the early days. Uh, I would say, for example, Lambda expressions, probably bigger than generics. And you know, some of the trends of how Java is being used in the industry is extremely exciting to me. So uh, you know, I, what I'd like to kind of comment about Java 8 is that Java 8 represents two things to me. One of them is the programmatic interface around things like functional programming the way people think about Java. I'd say that the second piece, though, has to do with concurrency, and it has to do with kind of things like the completion listeners for futures, and the notion of asynchronicity within uh, the Java framework. Because to me, two of the biggest drivers in Moore's law is the expansion of uh, in-memory computing, uh, and this notion that that uh, obviously RAM is becoming extremely large. And then obviously the other one that I think is closer to Java 8 at the core is uh, multi-core, right? Extreme and potentially heterogeneous multi-core, which is an environment where Java thrives. Um, so, you know, th those things are very exciting for me. And David, can you tell us specifically more, what's Hazelcast doing for Java 8? What's kind of the big picture that you see for the next year unfolding? Well, we, we're really excited about Java 8, and, and as, as Miko said, really um, lambdas and the, the ability to run lambda expressions in something like Hazelcast in a distributed environment is, is very exciting and, and very powerful. Um, you know, we, we've seen the traction that things like Guava has, has achieved with its functional, functional shift that it's tried to apply, and, and, and we, we, would, we would really like to be able to apply that in, into a hugely distributed environment. And, and we want Hazelcast to be able to support that. Um, so that's really where we want Hazelcast to be going. Um, and and we're, we've, we've been um, looking at Java 8 and, and running Hazelcast with Java 8 um, for, for a very long time now, so we hope to be compatible with that when, it, when it's released. One of the things that I think is exciting to me about Hazelcast is that Hazelcast introduces something to Java, which is that the JVMs now have almost like uh, multi-JVM cluster awareness, right? Which, you know, in some sense, languages like Erlang and other, other kinds of languages have inherently, but Java doesn't necessarily have inherently. So mm. to me, you know, when you take a Hazelcast jar file, which is just a 2.6 meg library that you put into any Java application, you suddenly get the JVMs to manage concurrent shared pooled memory, right? Which is amazing and then you kind of get concurrent multiprocessing. So the thing to me that's kind of intriguing is, is that the Java abstraction from the programmer perspective is the JVM, but to me the thing that's exciting about Hazelcast is, is it takes a single JVM, which is sort of an abstract von Neumann processor environment, and it basically takes that conceptual scheme and then allows you to run on like thousands of nodes, right? So, so from a programmer abstraction, it, it preserves the integrity of the JVM, but from a deployment perspective, it's actually a completely new world. Uh, so, you know, the amount of elastic scalability and power given to programmers today in Java, I think, is, is extremely exciting. And, and uh, I think one final comment in terms of the, the role of Java in, in the world today is, you know, I, over the past, you know, 15 years, I've seen a lot of evolution of Java and I've seen the emergence of both JVM languages and kind of polyglot uh, computing. So you're seeing Ruby and mm. Scala, Erlang, PHP, and all these other languages. But the role of Java in the enterprise continues to be extremely central, and that Java with its strong typing seems to hug the data, and it seems to be very close to the data. And so from a pure data language perspective, it feels to me like Java, especially with the introduction of Java 8, is still going to be uh, at the heart of the enterprise. Okay, so looking forward to Java 9 then. Yes, excited <laughs> about yeah, that as well. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Great, thank you very much. Thanks.